Welcome to the Property Nomads podcast. Uh, myself and Jake have just been laughing off air that I would probably butcher this introduction, so I'll give it my best shot to make it a good one. Uh, but welcome uh, to the show to Jake Barlow, who's uh, one of the CEOs of Property Store. But we're going to be talking a little bit about a little bit about travel today, uh, mainly about technological efficiencies and how to make your property portfolio as efficient as possible from a technology point of view. And you want to stay tuned at the end because there is a special offer for listeners of today's episode. So stay tuned to the very end. Uh, all of that being said, Jake, welcome to the Property Nomads podcast. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, uh, lovely to see you. And uh, thanks for having me on as well. No, really looking forward to this. Uh, and, uh, and a big thank you for doing a, a book review for Property FAQs uh, recently. Uh, that was... Yeah, it was good to see you sort of reading out from, from the book as well. So just a, a massive thank you for helping to uh, promote the book as well. Sure thing. Um, when we got Property FAQs, uh, we, read through, we read through it quite quickly. And um, there was a point in it that actually really resonated with us. And I know we're going to talk about travel um, a little bit later, but um, you talked about how, how can I invest in an area if you live far away from it is one of the questions. Uh, and I hope you don't mind me saying, but uh, the answer is pretty much a good team. And I think that's really important in, uh, especially for us traveling and, and investing in property as well at the same time, is that we, we technically don't live near any of the properties uh, that we've invested in. And uh, I think team has been the most important thing for us. So uh, yeah, it, it was a cracking book. I've got to thank you for the feedback. I'll try not to blush too much. For <laughs> no, it's good to know, it's, uh, you know, and the same purpose with this episode, this podcast episode and what we talk about as well. It's about adding as much value as you can because as long as someone somewhere takes something from a book podcast or whatever at the end of the day that's the most important thing yeah exactly so before we sort of crack on go down a technological route uh, for people that might not know about yourself and um, property still can you just give a little bit of a uh, background Sure. So uh, myself and Nicola, uh, my uh, fiance and business partner, we sort of stumbled into property by accident. I feel like a lot of people start off with this, uh, but about it was around the time you started the podcast, actually, in 2018, we were uh, living in our house. We'd saved up a small nest egg and we were like, right, I want to buy a buy to let. And it started off like that. We spoke with some of our friends and they said, you need to speak with um, Charlie uh, from Capstone Fox. He's a mega coach and you need to have a chat with him. So we rang him up and uh, he'd, he was then in the position we're in now where uh, we, we, he traveled and, and just had properties and didn't have a nine to five any longer. And it sort of opened our eyes to what you could do with property. So about six months after our initial discussion with him, we sold our home, uh, went to build a property portfolio and have been fairly aggressively growing the portfolio in the past two years, uh, which has been during the pandemic. So at first we were able to go and view properties, but very, very quickly uh, during the pandemic, we had, we had to refocus and sort of lean on lean on the more online elements and the networking elements of property investing to try and find the deals and then and then build the portfolio. So it's been tough, uh, but I think even then it was easier than it is now with the uh, demand in the market uh, spiking. I would, I would probably, uh, save for the health issues, of course, I would, I would probably go for a COVID um, property market over the property market we have now. Yeah, which is, which is fair enough, I, I think. I mean, that's a whole different sort of episode, macroeconomics and going down mm -hmm. various rabbit holes there. I completely agree with you. Uh, when when all that stuff started happening, obviously a market shock, people don't know, you know, what's going on, how we're going to react, et cetera. But where there's a will, there's a way. Just a quick point on that, because uh, it's a point that might, I say scare people. You said that you actually sold your main residence. Um, that's pretty cool and fair play to you for, for doing that. What was the what was the logic and the reasoning behind that particular move? Sure. So prior to that, we didn't actually have. Uh, um, in fact, my, my goal was always to be some sort of um, C-suite um, director in a, in a in a company working for someone else was was always the long term goal. And I think after that discussion with Charlie based on based on what you could do with property, 
uh, we had a sit down and uh, Nicola and I, and we were like, what do we want out of life? And we came up with the conclusion that time is what we wanted. Okay. And I think we read, um, we read the book by Robert Kiyosaki that everyone, I think everyone reads when they first get into property. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And in it, he talks about assets and liabilities. And he says that an asset, uh, or he, he sees an asset as something that puts money in your pocket and a liability takes money out of your pocket. And I'd always been taught that your personal residence was an asset, whereas it was taking a lot of money out of our pockets each month. So we worked out that if we could sell that um, residence, move into a smaller one, which would in future become a buy to let and then use the spare uh, capital to build a portfolio uh, through just the standard buy, renovate, refinance method, we could um, build a portfolio much, much quicker uh, and therefore achieve our goal of quitting our full-time jobs and traveling full-time. So we, and we accidentally stumbled onto a method, uh, I think it's called PPR, personal private residence, where you buy your personal home, then in do it up while you live in it in 12 months time, sell it. You don't pay capital gains tax because obviously you, you've lived in that home. And we did that three or four times. And, and when we started purchasing property or the first, I say started purchasing, our first home was 90,000. And then we were very fortunate with, um, with the fact that the town invested loads into the town and the property market has gone up ever since we bought it. And we've moved sort of three or four times since. And the final home that we sold, which was five or six years later, um, we'd bought for 515K and sold it for 720. So it had gone up an enormous amount, although we did spend a lot on um, refurb for that property because when we bought it, it was tremendously old and, and tired. So we did have a reasonable... Uh, pot to spend initially when we when we started this and then uh, following on from that Nicola left her job last February and I left mine on the 17th of October. Awesome stuff yeah I love I love 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 stories like that it's, it's fantastic um, that, the, but that knowledge is that knowledge is crucial and yeah that as it PRR I think you said that's primary residence relief for Sorry if I've just butchered that, but yeah, that's um, I know quite a few people that do that because again, it makes it makes an awful lot of sense. You know, why not? You don't need to pay CGT on it if uh, you know don't pay as much taxes. Uh, well, that's a whole different story. I'm completely off on a tangent, but you know, that's very that's very, very clever. Um, that's very very cool. And I know that in our emails before we got to this episode, um, you know, I feel, I feel a bit bad because I'm sort of half stuck here in. Well, at the time of recording, stuck here in the UK. When it goes out, I'll be somewhere in Central America doing stuff. Um, but yourselves, you've been doing a lot of travel. I think I've spoken to you. You've been in Thailand at some point, and then you were on your way to Istanbul. Uh, give us a little bit of, uh, give us a couple of uh, minutes synopsis of um, places where you've been, and maybe a, a favourite country or place that you've had. Sure. Um, so initially, the goal was 1st of November last year to, to go and travel across Asia while we worked. And then COVID had other ideas. So we had a backup. A friend of ours owns um, an apartment in Turkey. He actually does an SA strategy abroad. So we uh, called him up and stayed in one of his essays in Turkey uh, in um in South Turkey. I can't quite remember where it was exactly. And that was okay. But we actually found that we, we were there for a couple of months. We found that we missed the UK a lot because uh, we were in a summer holiday place off season. So it was it, by the end, by December, it was 10 degrees. Um, and there was everywhere was shut, shut us down. So it was great in the summer and we are going back this summer, uh, but I potentially can't give the best review of it because we were off season. Uh, we then we then came back for Christmas for a week or so, uh, saw the family, and then Thailand opened up a sandbox scheme, which was hilarious because the scheme was that you had to go, go to one of the islands in Thailand and then um, quarantine for 14 days. But their quarantine meant don't leave the island. So, so we were absolutely free to roam. So it felt like no quarantine whatsoever. The problem was it was getting there was 27 hours because we had to go through this 
special like routine and you had to get escorted from plane to plane because it was uh because it was still covid uh, restrictions everywhere and then we've traveled all of thailand because we couldn't leave um during that time without having to quarantine in other locations so we sort of started down south and then moved all the way up uh to the north and uh thailand to us is is the best country we've ever been uh it was beautifully hot the people were lovely uh, and the food in my opinion is the best food in the world thai food uh and then following that we on the way back uh we realized that you could get it was the same price for a economy ticket from thailand back to manchester as it was for a business class ticket from uh, bangkok to istanbul so and it was a deal on that was only on for a few days so we booked it like halfway through and then we flew back from uh to, to istanbul on the way back and that was okay but we were ready to go home so uh after after two and a bit months i can't actually remember how long we were out there uh, we were a bit fatigued with traveling all over um all over thailand and wanted some stability for a few weeks so we flew to istanbul we were only there for about three days before we decided to head back to the uk and now we're here for another three weeks and then we're off to travel europe and then america and then we're not really sure what we're doing at the end of the year yeah good 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 time to say that the caveat we'll have to sort of put on it is if we are recording this uh, don't like date stamping but we'll do it anyway recording this in april obviously this episode's out at the end of end of may so yeah so when you'll be out and about in europe i'll be out and about in mexico <laughs> six seven weeks out there and it's uh yeah i think my uh um partner might have something to say about Thai food being the best in the world. I'm sure she would say Mexican food it is the best in the world, <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, the, one thing I liked about Thailand was um, uh, when we was a, uh, my business partner and I were there years ago was that, yeah, found the people were really nice, food really good as well, but also found it was like playing um, Russian roulette with the Chang beer because you'd get some that tasted like own brew that would be like 2%, and I'm sure some of them were like eight or nine percent you know plus you could it's like yeah russian roulette with with the beer over there but in, in a good way of course yeah they do sometimes say uh you'll go into a bar and they'll say oh this beer is uh 50 baht or something which is i don't know how much that is like a quid two quid um and it'd be way cheaper than all the other beers they have and they'd call it heineken and then you'd take a sip and you think this isn't heineken <laughs> this is like lemonade <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about that sounds about right for yeah. for Thailand. Uh, yeah, no, good good time. So a lot of traveling going on. Uh, awesome that you've sort of followed that initial PRR strategy, and then also in the portfolio the BRR strategy. I mean, we've all you know we can write sort of books about it all day long. It's not overly rocket science. I'm not sort of disparaging ourselves, yourself, or anyone that does said strategy. In, in property once you've done it a couple of times it's pretty much run of the mill might always be stuff that pops up uh, you know as 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 with um anything but as you grow as you grow the portfolio uh and as people grow their portfolios you probably found that over time you've got a mixture of systems you know you might have excel for something you might then have slack for communication or something like trello or you know insert name of software here how have you been and we'll get on to sort of the nooks and crannies of talking about the app that's coming out from yourselves in due course but in terms of managing that initially as you grow in your portfolio how have you found that have you found it challenging have you found it enjoyable what, what are your thoughts about the data that is needed to grow a portfolio yeah, I think that what surprised us when we first started to learn how this community invests in property is that, like you say, you're pulling data from tons of different sources and tracking so much. And I think tracking is OK, but trying to remember things is really difficult. For example, if you've got 100 offers out, trying to remember to follow up on those offers in a month's time or two weeks time is an absolute nightmare when you've got an Excel spreadsheet that you're trying to trying to go down. So I think that was our biggest problem. And especially knowing that we were going traveling um, as the end goal of building the portfolio, automating it was a, as of huge importance to us. So 
I think in answer to your question, uh, I think that having lots of data is good to make informed decisions, but also painful if the systems you have in place aren't then therefore managing it for you. Um, and it takes up a lot of brain space. And it certainly did with us and causes a lot of stress as we grew the property portfolio. Is that just in terms of having X amount of offers out there or are you able to pinpoint or give another e example or two of things that might have caused stress and tension as you've been growing the portfolio? I think a lot of people will be able to relate to the waking up at uh, midnight and going, is that is that mortgage? Uh, is that fixed rate period about to end? Or did I did I call the utility company up and and get the gas and electric renewed on that on that property or whatever it might be? And we certainly had loads of those because yes, we were storing all of the information and what what utility companies we were using and everything. But we then didn't there then have anything to follow up with us and remind us. And we always we always. Um, say that uh, our goal for whatever systems we use is that we should never have to log in like that should be the end goal to not to not have people reliant on a system but have the system tell them what to do and i think that's always our end goal the, the less we log in the more successful that we've been i i, I found that as well uh, in terms of sort of just taking myself out of the business sometimes as well um, i'm sure you probably resonate this and people listening would do as well that you can become so ingrained and engrossed into something which is perfectly fine there is nothing wrong with that at all and then without the necessary guidance maybe from a coach or, or, or a mentor for example you find that actually you're getting in the way a lot more when you don't think you're getting in the way if that makes sense um so yeah you know i've found that from just taking some some time out and getting some systems in place like i don't know i'm only going to look at email on a monday or whatever and mm -hmm. you find that actually nine times out of ten any challenges that come up seem to solve themselves because people either know what they're doing or it's not that important in the first place um yeah so i just thought i'd add to, to your comment to be honest yeah i i think you're right um and what the to add to that what we found the most challenging was that there are systems in place um that are out there that allow you to manage your existing portfolio and manage your existing tenant base and they're fantastic solutions as well uh, the challenge we found is that a property business isn't just about managing your existing portfolio and your existing tenants a property business is you've got to do your accounts every month and um, you might have a coach that you need to interact with and a community that you're going to talk to you've also got to source your own deals or um, assess deals that a deal sourcer has sent you and then you have to track through all of your refurbs and uh, and and um, legals and everything and maintenance issues and everything that comes with it and what you end up doing is using five different pieces of software and i'm i'm a pen and paper guy uh, so i'll also i'll always use a pad even though even though we have systems in place so you end up with paper all over your desk excel spreadsheets um and and then a tenancy management solution at, at the back end and what nicola and i uh, discussed is why, why are we still doing this? Uh, why don't we just build what we need uh, for ourselves? And then if other people want to use it, then great. And it turned out other people did want to use it. Uh, and the Prosperity Network, who are a large training company, uh, licensed the software off us and they actually give all of their students our software. Uh, they, give, they give them access as part of their membership. And um, we've done that now since November last year. And now um, we've got a waiting list of people and we thought, okay, let's, uh, let's finally agree a date that we're gonna go live with. And uh, of course, on the 7th of June, that's when we decided Property Store is going to go live to the public. Yeah, awesome stuff. So that's a couple of weeks from obviously today's date from, from this episode being up. So let's, well, I say let's talk more. Obviously I haven't been involved in the app at all. So it's <laughs> nothing to do with me as such. So ignore what I've just said. Um, Let's go into uh, as well, go into as much as you can um, about the app then. Um, what's it intended to do? How can people find out about it? And also you said, we mentioned at the start, there might be a, a special offer for people that are listening to this episode. So the floor, the floor's all yours, Jake. 
Sure. Uh, so as I mentioned before, Property Store is there to manage your portfolio end to end, right from thinking, oh, that looks like a good deal, all the way through to um, either selling it or having it let and managed. And within that, we have tons and tons of features. And what we've tried to do is not build features that everyone else has. What we've tried to do is build features that we think would be useful. So of course it has task management and maintenance tickets and you can manage your tenancies. But I, I probably wanna talk about the cooler, uh, the cooler features that we enjoy a lot more. And those are like, we've got a viewing manager which will allow you to, uh, the, the problem we found is when we were away, what we would do is we would book loads and loads of viewings um, for one day when we come back, maybe come back for a long weekend, do all of those viewings Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then fly out again. And that would enable us to sort of bulk do property viewings. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to call up agents and say, when are you available? And they, they say, oh, you can do a viewing between one and two. And then you're like, okay, so this property can do between one and two. When is this property available? And you're calling that agent up or vendor up and you're trying to arrange all these viewings. It's a nightmare because you've got Google Maps open. You're trying to work out the distances between them, how long it's going to take you, how long you're planning on doing each viewing. So we built a um, viewing manager into Property Store, which whenever your, your properties are at the stage viewing, then it'll automatically load them into viewing manager. And because the address is already in uh, Property Store, it'll, it actually connects to Google Maps. It works out the most efficient route between all those properties and then tells you what time you need to leave your previous property and go to the next one. So if you're on the phone to an agent, you can simply just uh, drag your properties in and then they can say, oh, you can be here at 10.15 and you can just look at property store in front of you without having to leave the screen. And it'll say, uh, you can't make that, you're gonna be five minutes late. So you can move your viewings in real time on the phone with agents. We also have uh, loads of features coming out over the next few months that are gonna be pretty, pretty huge. And one of them is that building an appraisal pack or, a, or an investor pack for your properties uh, takes a long, long time, uh, you know, a few hours to put it together. You've got to try and work out crime rates and, and uh, comparables and, and whatever else you want to include in that pack. Uh, we're releasing a feature that will allow you to, at the click of a button, produ automatically produce the investor pack and pull all the information from across the internet. So it'll pull the um, it'll pull the EPC register, it'll pull it'll pull floor plans, it'll pull crime rates, it'll auto um, populate the comparables, value the property, uh, all in a single click. So that's something that people can use to engage with their their investors. And finally, we're implementing. Uh, PDF downloads, which doesn't sound too sexy, but what it allows you to do is if you've got a refurb going on and you're having to create a weekly update for either your investors or let's say you're a project manager and you have clients, uh, you can just keep your, uh, your project up to date in Property Store with a few clicks. And at any point you can hit create create PDF and it will create a project update for you and it'll pull all of the stages and images through overall notes, everything in one click, again, saving you tons and tons of time so you can keep your investors up to date. Music to my ears, absolute music to my ears. So because what, you, what you're doing there, which is brilliant, is you, you're highlighting, and again, I'm speaking from personal point of view, but I'm sure there's gonna be hundreds of people listening to this uh, probably going light bulb moment absolute genius that some things there like doing your packs for you know sourcing uh if you're sourcing property packs for the investors or if you're doing it for a remortgage process and you know that could take a long long time whereas what you've managed to do in the app is basically simplify it so it goes back to what we were saying at the start uh utilizing technology in order to make things just a, a lot easier um, and and again that's even if you're doing what you're doing uh, and traveling around a lot, even if you're just UK based and you've got a full time job, it doesn't matter because the time efficiency is, is what's key here and time is incredibly important. Yeah, so there's an analogy we always use and um, that is uh, the, diff the difference between a juggler and a magician. And a juggler spends tens of thousands of hours um, perfecting his skills um, so that they can show them off to the world. 
And a magician spends tens of thousands of hours perfecting their skills so that they can hide them from the world. And I, we see property store as the same. Um, the that that um, Arthur C. Clarke quote, I think it was, um, where he says that any sufficiently advanced technology should be indistinguishable from magic, and that's that's the goal for us, right? We want people to log in and not not see all of the technical stuff that's going on behind the scenes. We just want drag and drop nice and simple. And we've built it for technophobes, basically, because we don't want tons of drop downs and all oh, click here and then move this. We just want drag and drop. Does the software do it for you? If the answer is yes, then we've done our job right. And uh, we've built something into the system uh, or automations. So you can make automations for anything you want in the system. And what that means is that, say, for example, you always get a surveyor when you when you move it to the um i don't know legals uh, stage you can set an automation up to automatically create new tasks to follow up on a surveyor and call them when it moves to that stage so we've got probably 40 or 50 automations set up across our across our pipeline which means that whenever we get a property all we do is drag it to the next stage and it's all drag and drop so drag it to offer and then when we drag a property to offer the software will tell us in a month's time, make sure you follow up on that offer. And you can create you can create automations for anything. So they're probably the most important thing that you could use because at that point, all you need to do is just drag your properties across the pipeline and do nothing else. And, it, and the, the property store should be able to tell you everything based on that. Yeah, good times. Uh, it's just, again, music to my music to my ears, that is, Jake. I won't lie, that's, uh, I'm sure it's gonna be music to a lot of people's ears as well uh, you mentioned obviously out on june the 7th mentioned that um so some form of waiting list as well so if people listen to this episode and they're going right you know rob jake this is absolutely perfect i need to get me some some of this app and these automations how can people go and find this sure uh, so as when this podcast is out it's currently only live with members of the prosperity network when when this goes live on the 7th of june uh, it will go live to our waiting list first and we're only opening it up to a limited number of people uh, and if people use the code nomads when they sign up they'll guarantee access on the 7th of june and they'll get an email in their inbox with access and we are going to be doing some sort of launch offer uh, a percentage discount of sorts to those uh, to those new signups and that again will be announced to the uh, email list uh, with anyone that signed up with nomads as the code uh, closer to the time. So they can just head to the link and, um, like I say, type nomads into the code and they'll be guaranteed access. Awesome stuff. So uh, for anyone listening to this, uh, go and check out the show notes. We'll put the link into the show notes as well. We're very kind of you to offer that to uh, listeners of the Property Nomads podcast. I highly appreciate it. Sure. And if they're and if they're still unsure as well, we do offer one to ones uh, with everyone so uh, they can get a one to one demo with the system because we do have it available right now and we're just not releasing it. So I can I can show anyone that books in uh, using our website as well. Wonderful stuff. Uh, and in terms of people finding yourselves in general, uh, and again, these links will be in the show notes too, but how can people find out more about yourself so they can find us on instagram either for our personal instagram for property investing that's badger and nash uh, and for uh, property store they can just go at property store limited uh, ltd and they'll uh, and they'll be able to find uh, all of our socials and then our website is www.property-store.co.uk Great stuff. And again, as usual, we'll put all that in the show notes. Uh, Jake, anything else to add uh, about the app release? Anything, uh, any final words of wisdom? Uh, just one thing to say, thank you very much for having us on. Uh, it's really appreciated. And uh, we are really, really genuinely excited about the launch, uh, the launch of the app, not just because uh, it's obviously our product and our baby that we're releasing, uh, but because we really do genuinely want to improve the lives of property investors out there and make things simpler. That's wonderful to hear. It's all about adding value, and I'm sure it's going to be an absolute blast 
uh, upon launching that people are going to find it incredibly useful mechanism to have in their lives as well. Sure. Thanks very much. Take care. All the best.